across. Thanks. It does. That's a real sound. Sound is everything, is it, though. Yeah, who was it that said that, <laughs> you know, if you have a good sound, everything play will sound good. That's I right. I think Chet Baker said that. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> it sounds just about right, doesn't it? <laughs> and boy, did he have a good sound. Lovely. He was amazing. Just as... You ever hear him live? I played with him. <laughs> In Chicago in uh, the jazz showcase in his later later years uh, nothing non-eventful it was just a, a very musical evening actually mm -hmm. uh, what was the instrumentation trombone and trumpet and rhythm section wow that must have been just life changing I tell you I've had some uh, experiences along those lines of playing with some of my very favorite musicians, mm -hmm. such as Louis Armstrong. Oh my gosh. That would be the Grammy Awards in 1964. And that was you and Woody Herman in that too? That's right. It's, well, that's why we were there. It wasn't me, for sure, yeah. you know. Uh, that was Woody's 62 band, you know, which was one of his best. Mm -hmm. Uh, with Bill Chase and Sal Nestico and all those guys. And we were on top of the world at that point as a big man in the popularity polls and stuff like that. Yeah. And so we were hired to play the entire Grammy Awards. Wow. And those days, they didn't have the Grammy Orchestra like they do today. Yeah. Uh, down at the Capitol uh, Building re recording. Uh, no. As a matter of fact, they hired Woody and we played the whole thing. And that means when, whenever somebody was announced as a winner, uh -huh. you would hear some very funny sounds because we each had a stack of music, of little pieces of music for everybody's entrance in case they won. Yeah. Right? Got to be on your toes for that. <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> we were not known for being on our toes. <laughs> they would say, and here's the winner, Barbara Strozheim, and you'd hear... Oh, uh, you know, a sound like uh, this. Right. And maybe one trumpet player and one tenor and one drummer and something like that coming in. And it would last for about <laughs> five seconds. Yeah. And by the fifth second, you'd have the whole band. Da da! And she, uh, there she'd be. Oh, nice. Man. But that was also the year, 64. Uh, this was in the Astor Hotel Ballroom. Okay. Uh, New York City, and uh, um, Louis Armstrong, uh, this is a, a lovely story, and I hope I get it right. Okay. Louis Armstrong won the Grammy that year over the Beatles. He was, uh, he had recorded Hello Dolly, which was actually Strzai's song, uh, just before he went on a tour. Mm hmm and uh, the funny thing is, uh, he recorded it at the end of a recording session. This would be a year before the Grammy Awards, of course. Yeah. Uh, he recorded it at the end of a recording session, and they did three takes mm -hmm. with him singing, thinking, you know, wouldn't this be nice? And, right. Um, Massive hit. <laughs> no, listen to this one. All right. This comes from John Hammond's office. They did three takes. None of them were particularly good. <laughs> and they didn't think too much of it. They, this was just something they did at the tail end. It was almost unplanned. Mm -hmm. Almost. Mm -hmm. And then Louis left the country with the All-Stars. Yeah. Trummy Young and all of those guys. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, man. wonderful band. Wow. Uh, and toured... Uh, Europe and Russia and you know whatever the wherever they were for three months. Mm -hmm. Well, George Vakian, who was the A and R man for Columbia in those days for Louis, mm -hmm. uh, took those three bad takes and spliced together one passable take, 
and put the record wow. out while Louis in Europe, oh, out wow. of the country. Wow. And it went right to the top. Oh yeah, didn't that kind of resurface him into the mainstream at that time? You know it, yeah. that's exactly what happened. Right. Yeah. Well, it ended up on the top of the billboard charts over the Beatles. That's just wow, amazing. That, but, yeah. yeah, but check this out. Okay. Six weeks in a row. <laughs> I mean, that's, wow. that's convincing. And if you're wow. talking about communication, wow, that's amazing. They come back to this country, right? Uh -huh. And they're opening in some big uh, auditorium. Some people say uh, Miami Convention Center, you know, huge. Yeah. Uh, and guess what? What's that? They're, the hit of the country is Hello, Dolly by Louis Armstrong. Oh, my gosh. Guess what? They haven't even thought about doing that for three months since the recording session, wow. right? <laughs> yeah. So... Uh, this they got people lined up outside of the convention center, mm -hmm. and waiting to hear the Louis sing "Hello Dolly," and they haven't a, a clue, right? Mm -hmm. So they took a fistful of dimes down to a local bar and started feeding it into the uh, what do you call it? Jukebox. Jukebox, yeah. yeah. And they just kept playing that until they learned it, wow. and then they went in and played the evening set, the, you know, and the, the finale, the fiesta de resistance oh, of the man. evening was, was Louis doing Hello, Dolly. That must and, have been a moment. Oh, God, can you imagine? Oh, man. That's so funny. Well, here he is at the Grammy Awards, right? Uh -huh. And uh, uh, Woody's band is playing the whole thing, you know. And in the afternoon, uh, there's kind of a run through, and we had a... Uh, uh, about uh, 45 minutes where Louis came out on the stage mm -hmm. and uh, we played for about 45 minutes and Woody selected me as the trombone player which uh, you know was uh, wow well you well deserved I, my friend I'm well deeply respectful I always have been mm -hmm. Woody and uh, 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 Louis and all of these people who I love you know that's the, the, the music that we play and that's one of the things I've always been admired about you, my friend. Oh, thank you. That's the truth. Your, your, uh, your um, memory, uh, your love, that's the right word, right, of the history from when, whence we came is, is just admirable. And I've had a lot of students over the, the years who don't have a clue as to what that is, what that means. They're wonderful players, please, you know, they're all in their own world and they're great players. I don't, there's no negative there, except for that X factor. And you, you wonder uh, how my, the 77 year old has, uh, remembers you now 31, but I remember you, I think, was it eight, nine, 10 years ago? Yeah, I came in 04. This would be uh, Berkeley College of 04 Music. 04 to 07 is, is when I, well, that's a while ago, seven yeah. years ago. Yeah, I think I first met you in 03. Maybe I had a meeting with my parents. We came to your office right away <laughs> on your office hours, uh, and I think we played Lady Bird, uh, some kind of contrafacted Lady Bird or probably. something. Probably. It, it could have been anything, you of know. Of course. Right? Yes. <laughs> well, anyways, that, that whole story with, with Louis was uh, immense. And when Louis comes out on the stage, uh, it's just amazing his presence. Uh, I, his presence in the room. Mm -hmm. You've got this room full of uh, waitresses and people setting up for the evening, you know, yeah. wow. Yeah. Man, Louis walks out on the stage over there and everybody stops. Oh, gosh. I yeah. mean, everybody. And they just sit down and we, we played, of course, Hello, Dolly and Royal Garden Blues. Oh, man. And uh, I wish I could have heard that. that oh, oh my I wish gosh. I had. Oh man. <laughs> I wish I you had. You got a nice tape. picture, though, of you and Louis and Woody up there playing. I've seen it. No kidding. No kidding. Popsy, the old photographer, sent that to me. That is, that is beautiful, yeah. man. And so that, you know, we, we played the 45 mm -hmm. rehearsal. Yeah. End of that. 
Louis walks off the stage. Everybody goes back to work, right? Mm -hmm. The same thing happened at night. As soon as Louis walked out on that stage, literally everything except cameras, you know, and uh, media stuff. Mm -hmm. But everybody stopped. I mean everybody. Yeah. It's not, it, was, it was 45 minutes as far as I was concerned with all of the talking and all that story stuff, you know. It was, you know, perhaps my biggest music lesson was right there. You've been watching the adventures of Phil Wilson and Paul the Trombonist. This is video number eight in the series. The series includes some master classes, interviews, talking about life, some studio sessions, all kinds of cool things. There's going to be a little playlist down in the description which will take you from video to video or you can watch them all at once. And if you don't mind, please leave a comment in the comment section. Boy, we love hearing from you. It's really quite fun and it's spectacular. And remember, you can tune a piano, but you cannot tune a fish. Or can you?